Around 10 years ago, the word phablet became increasingly popular among smartphone enthusiasts. Back then, a phablet, aka phone tablet, was used to classify any smartphone that had a screen larger than 5 inches. Fast forward to today and you might find it hard to find any phone even smaller than 6 inches, which means the word phablet has now become obsolete, right? Well, it seems that Vivo have redefined the word phablet with this, a 7 inch behemoth known simply as the Vivo X Note which apart from its display size and chipset is extremely similar to last year's Vivo X70 Pro Plus, which leads us to the question, is bigger always better? Let's find out in my unboxing and review of the Vivo X Note. The Vivo X Note comes in three different color variants. You can pick it up in an anti-glare glass version known as Dark Knight Black. Anti-glare glass only comes in black on the X Note. Or you can pick it up in gray known as Earth Ash or blue known as Mountain Blue. Very weird why it's called Mountain Blue. Anyway, the blue and the gray colors come in this vegan leather backing and both of them come with an included vegan leather case. The phone and the case both have artificial stitching, so there's no actual stitching that can come apart on the phone. It looks absolutely phenomenal from a business point of view, and inside of it, it has a 5,000 milliamp hour dual cell battery, 80 watt wire charging, 50 watt wireless charging, a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 CPU, a custom Vivo V1 ISP chipset, which can apparently also share the GPU load, a massive heat dissipation area, as well as LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage. The back and fronts are protected by Gorilla Glass Victus, that is if you pick up the glass version of the device, otherwise you're stuck to a leather back finish. And you'll be happy to hear that the phone is IP68 dust and water resistant. The camera module looks pretty similar to that of the X70 Pro Plus despite there being a big circle, and inside the camera module sits the four same cameras that we saw on the X70 Pro Plus, that being a 48 megapixel ultra wide sensor, 50 megapixel main sensor, 12 megapixel telephoto sensor for two times optical zoom, and an 8 megapixel megapixel periscope telephoto sensor for five times optical zoom. The ultra wide shot looks fantastic and binning it down four to one binning to 12 megapixels looks even better if you ask me. 50 megapixel main once again looks great and binning it down using the Zeiss color range looks fantastic. Of course two times optical zoom over here using the telephoto, five times using the periscope looks superb. 10 times hybrid zoom with that eight megapixel periscope looks fantastic. 30 times digital zoom and 60 times is the max though not the best I've seen. It still looks pretty decent. Taking a photo of my friend Buzz over here using portrait mode has okay edge detection and two times optical zoom portrait mode looks okay. I think five times optical zoom portrait mode looks arguably the best and you can get close up and personal thanks to the macro mode which uses the ultra wide sensor. When it comes to video we do have 8k at 30 frames per second over here which is a bit jittery but it still gets the job done. Probably something to use when you're standing still. 4k 60 fps is nice and smooth over here though I did detect a black drop frame which is a bit weird and we also have 4k 60 fps ultra wide which once again looks pretty much fantastic even though it is a very gloomy hazy polluted day here in Shanghai. 4K 60 FPS ultra wide at night doesn't look the best. Of course, 60 frames per second at night never really looks the best. Dropping it down to 30 FPS doesn't look quite as good as I've seen 30 FPS 4K video on other smartphones, but it still does okay. 4K 60 using the main at night looks a lot better at 60 frames per second, but once again, 30 FPS is the sweet spot for night recording, though it takes away a lot of the detail in the video, which is a bit of a bummer, but it does tend to brighten things up quite a bit. As you can see over here with Vivo's new night video mode, but do bear in mind that night video mode on the right hand side is capped and limited to 1080p at 24 frames per second. Night photos though, turning on night mode with ultra wide does brighten things up though it loses detail. Same thing can be said with the main sensor, kind of brightens things up with the main sensor, not as much as with the ultra wide. The weird thing though is at two times digital zoom, the telephoto is not used. It uses the main sensor. Going to five times doesn't use the periscope but instead it uses the telephoto sensor going to 10 times. The telephoto is still used, but putting night mode on on 10 times. And now the periscope is used. Periscope is used again for 30 times, all the way up to 60 times where the night mode is off or on. Very strange mix of photos over here when using night mode 
on and off. So I guess the phone doesn't exactly take the best evening photos, especially when zooming in, but overall it takes fantastic photos and videos. And when comparing the actual build and design to that of the S22 Ultra, it is taller and wider, but it is actually thinner and has a larger screen. You really don't feel much of a difference in size between these two, though the S22 Ultra has an S Pen in it and this X Note does not. We have a volume rock and power button on the right hand side. We have an alert slider on the left hand side, which is something new first that we've seen on a Vivo, much like we've seen from OnePlus before. And we have a dual SIM 5G standby tray at the bottom, which has a water resistant seal, but no expandable storage option. USB type C port at the bottom, as well as the first dual stereo speaker at the bottom. The second one is found inside the earpiece at the top. And we also have an IR blaster there too. Punching a hole into that massive display is a 16 megapixel selfie camera, the same that we saw on the iQ9 Pro and it's dropped from the 32 megapixel that we saw on the X70 Pro Plus and photos come out more than decent I guess you could say. What's up guys, Technic here and today I'm recording a selfie video on the brand new Vivo X Note. It seems to be capping at 1080p and 30fps however since there's only a 1080p and 720p option and no option to change the frames per second which is a bit of a bummer no 4k and no 60fps nevertheless let me know what you guys think of the audio and video quality when recording on the brand new vivo x note using the selfie cam that video when using the selfie cam is not the best and it is a huge bummer that we're limited to 1080p resolution and 30fps using the selfie camera during the day or at night night mode off and on with the selfie cam looks good but even though beautify mode is off it tends to throw it on anyway no night mode option for portrait mode but using the flash once again looks all right the selfie camera is a bit of a mixed bag i think photos look arguably a lot better than the video options that we have and once powering on the phone though we have qualcomm's massive 3d sonic max sensor it is of course ultrasonic there is nothing quicker than it on the planet in terms of under display fingerprint technology you can change the display area as well as a bunch of different animation styles but the truly incredible thing about this is not about the customization options it's just how darn fast it is just point two seconds to unlock, and it is so much larger than previous generation ultrasonic sensors, 17 times larger than Gen 1. We do have 2D face unlock over here, though it uses the selfie cam, no 3D sensor next to the selfie cam over there, and the screen itself is absolutely ginormous. We have a seven inch E5 AMOLED, very strange aspect ratio, 21 by 10, which is supposedly better for multitasking. It is of course curved, it is WQHD+. We have over 1 billion colors, HDR10+, 100 112% DCI-P3 color gamma and 1,500 nits of peak brightness. That QHD plus resolution renders a result of 486 pixels per inch. And we do have 120 Hertz refresh rate and 240 Hertz touch sampling rate. The touch sampling is a little low and the LTPO refresh rate is actually LTPO 1.0, not 2.0. So it can only refresh between 10 and 120 Hertz, not one and 120 Hertz, like we've seen from recent devices, but it still gets the job done. We do have Origin OS ocean skinned over Android 12 over here and it's not like fun touch which we see in global software since this is actually a Chinese variant it looks very much like a mixed bag between Android and iOS I actually personally absolutely love it I think that there are so many customization options that are actually useful you can customize it the way that your heart desires you can change folder sizes icon sizes you can use split screen with this crazy aspect ratio of 21 by 10 and it almost looks like two perfect squares I think multitasking is actually something that I would consider doing quite a lot on this device since it is so darn massive and you can save your multitasking apps in an icon on your home screen and just open it up for ease of access. And we can also, of course, pin things to the side for bringing it up later on. And of course, Google services is fully integrated into the device. We do have that alert slider on the left-hand side, which is something that OnePlus are getting rid of and now Vivo are adopting, even though they're made by the same BBK Electronics company. Anyway, we have 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, four gigs of extended RAM, and we do have that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 octa-core CPU at the helm. We of course also have performance mode over here, and when pairing all of them together, we got an Antutu score of 979,271 points, which is quite a bit lower than the average Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 part smartphone on my channel. And that's also the case when it comes to Geekbench version 5, where we got a single core score of 1210, which is slightly lower than the average Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 part smartphone on my channel. However, its multi-core score was actually quite a bit better. And we can't forget about 3D Mark Wildlife, 54.8 frames per second on average, which is 
pretty much four frames per second less than the average Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 I've personally tested on my channel. But this device can be used for more than just benchmarks, so we're gonna test it out in a couple games, starting here with Genshin Impact with the highest possible graphics settings and max FPS. The max FPS for this game is capped at 60 FPS, so even though the X node can reach 120 FPS or 120 Hertz, thanks to that wonderful LTPO display, it is gonna be capped at 60 because the game is limited to 60 and we're getting between 32 and 58 frames per second on average, whereas the average Snapdragon Gen 1 powered smartphone I've personally tested on my channel gets between 34 and 58 FPS so I guess you could say it's largely similar to other phones I've tested and testing out bullet force over here since this doesn't have a frames per second cap it is unlimited using ultra graphics and the unlimited FPS cap we should be able to reach 120 FPS we actually exceed that and reach 121 but we went as low as 86 frames per second whereas on other Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phones I've tested I've gotten between 113 and 122 FPS, so a much more narrow range, meaning it's been more stable on other devices. But what about the speakers on this massive device? Let's go ahead and give them a listen. The Vivo X Note is the largest smartphone I have used in a while, but honestly, it feels no larger than my iPhone 13 Pro Max or Galaxy S22 Ultra in the hand, which means that you're getting quite a bit more screen real estate without much sacrifice. That being said, the display itself is stunning thanks to seven inches of LTPO E5 AMOLED glory that boasts in resolution, refresh rate, color, and brightness. Underneath that display sits a huge 3D Sonic Max ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, which is miles better than any other fingerprint reader currently available, but there is no 3D face ID and selfie photos and videos come out just okay. The back camera module is enormous, however, and apart from the circular bump, looks fairly similar to that of the X70 Pro Plus. Not only does it look similar to it, but shares all the same lenses, meaning it takes some of the best photos and videos you will ever see a smartphone produce. The leather finish is stunning, the alert slider is a welcomed new addition, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 has all things running smoothly, the 5000 mAh battery will keep you going all day, and 80 watt wired or 50 watt wireless charging will juice up this juggernaut in no time. But and this is a big but. This device is called the Vivo X Note, and yet there is no stylus pen built into the phone. Which leads me to say that I am more than happy to recommend the Vivo X Note as the best large screen smartphone ever made. But if you are in the market for a smartphone that actually comes with a built-in stylus, then there is still only one incredible phone which fits that criteria. And unfortunately, the Vivo X Note is not that phone.